What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to dockerize a Python application that uses a graphical user interface. So let us get right into it. All right, so what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to learn how to dockerize Python applications that use a graphical user interface. As an example for this, we're going to use a very simple graphical user interface only relying on the core Python module tkinter. But of course, you can do this also with PyQt5 and with some more advanced graphical user interface frameworks if you also install the necessary packages. Now, the basic idea behind dockerization or containerization in general is compatibility. So instead of me building an application, be it a web application, be it a GUI application or some complex collection of classes and modules that are interdependent, uh, when I deliver them to you, I don't have to explain to you that you need to install this package and this package and this package and you need to downgrade this one and you need to upgrade this one and then you need to set some environment variable and then you need to create this directory and add this config file. I can just deliver to you a Docker image and you can just build a container based on that Docker image and everything the application needs to run is already in that ecosystem, in that closed system. You don't need to do anything on your system because the system that the application is running on is the Docker container itself. That's the basic idea, but things get a little bit more tricky when you add a graphical user interface because then you don't have a monitor, you don't have a display, you need to connect to a so-called uh, X server, so you need to connect the Docker container uh, to a display, which we're going to do in this video today, and you also need to install some packages, and depending on the framework um, that you use, you need to also install additional packages. But as I said, we're going to use just TK Inter today, and we're going to get started with a very simple Python application. We're going to say import TK Inter as TK, import TK Inter dot message box, or actually from TK Inter dot message box, we're going to import show info. And then we're going to create a root element TK dot TK. We're going to define a function, uh, a function so, uh, show message, which is going to take, actually, we're not even going to take a parameter. We're just going to say show info, hello world, like this. And then we're going to add a simple button. We're going to say that the button is a TK button with uh, the text being equal to press me or maybe click me. We're going to add it to the root element or to the root window. Uh, and we're going to say that the command of this button should be show message. And here we just pass the function. So we don't call it, we just pass it. Uh, and then finally, we say button pack, so that it's part of the UI. And then we start the root main loop. Very simple, nothing too fancy. This is not a tutorial on GUI programming. I have multiple of those on my channel. This is just a simple graphical user interface where I can click on this button. And actually, this is just a title. Let me just change this line. This is some title and the actual message here is hello world. Let's run this again. Now I can click and it says hello world. That's the basic idea. And this is just something that we can use here as an example, you can build a graphical user interface that's more complex, as long as it just uses TK enter, nothing should be a problem here. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a Docker file, which is basically the definition for the image, we're going to specify what Python version we want to use, we want to specify all the packages, all the commands that need to be run. Uh, in this case, we don't need any external packages. So we don't even need to run pip install anything. Um, but this Docker file will be used then to create an image. And with that image, we can then create a container. So we're going to create a new file, we're going to call it Docker file with a capital D. Um, and in here, we're going to now define some basic stuff. So first of all, I have a video on dockerization or containerization with Docker. Uh, off Python application on my channel where I explain everything in detail where I explain everything from scratch. In this video, I'm going to assume that you at least know what Docker is that you have Docker installed or you're able to install Docker, because this is a specific use case of dockerizing a GUI application. If you don't know how to dockerize anything in the first place, watch my first video and then come back to this video afterwards. So we're going to start here by saying from Python, and then 3.9. This is going to be the version that we're going to use. Uh, actually, I think we can also just use slim. Let's see if this messes up anything. 
Uh, we're going to just define this Python version here. We're going to say that the work directory is going to be slash app inside of the Docker container. We're going to, um, if you have any requirements, we don't have any in this case, but if you use something like PyQt for anything, what you would want to do is you would want to create a requirements file. So for example, requirements.txt. And maybe you don't even use some GUI stuff, but maybe you need some uh, other packages that your application uses. So for example, requests or anything. Uh, what you would do then is you would say copy requirements txt into the current directory and then run pip install uh, and so on and so forth dash r requirements txt. But in this case, as I said, we don't need this because we're just working with a core Python package. So we're going to get rid of this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just copy uh, everything here into the container. So we're going to just or into the image. So we're going to delete the requirements file. And I'm going to just say copy everything from this directory into the working directory. So copy dot dot. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install some packages um, for some Linux packages, essentially. Um, and the thing about this is that probably you can also get this to run with different packages or a different combination of packages. I tried around a little bit and this is the combination that worked for me. Chances are that some of the modules, some of the packages here that I'm going to list are not going to be necessary to install. So maybe you can dismiss some of them, discard some of them, and it will still work. Maybe um, you can exchange some of them. But this configuration as I'm going to show it to you now here worked for me and it's going to work in this video. So what we want to do here is we want to say run apt get install, or actually, first of all, we want to say update, and then end end apt get install dash y and we want to install lip x 11 dash six lip x x dash def lip x render dash def. Now you can actually also just make a line break. And I think with a backslash, you can escape it. But I'm going to just write all of this in one line. Let me just see if I'm not blocking this. I'm not. That's great. So x render, then we're going to say lip x in rama def uh, lip x i dash def. So all developer packages here lip x rent r def lip x cursor def lip x tst. Actually, I forgot the x here def and then tk dash def for tk enter to get this running. And then we're going to say end end rm minus rf. So basically delete everything force the deletion of slash var slash lip slash apt slash lists and everything, oh, everything in here. So those are just dependencies here. Those are just packages. Um, you can type them off from here. Maybe if I don't forget about this, I'm going to add them in the link uh, or not in a link, I'm going to add them in the description down below. If I forget this, you can just type them off here from the screen. So those are the packages. As I said, you can play around, you can try to remove one of them and not install it. Uh, I didn't try all the possible combinations. But those are now dependencies that we're going to need to have a graphical user interface in the first place. And then we're going to stream the display uh, onto our X server on Windows so that we can actually see what is happening in the graphical user interface of this container. Um, and finally, all we need to do here is we need to say CMD Python main py. That's all we need to do. This is the command to run the actual application. So this is our Docker file. Now it's very simple since we don't need to install much other than some basic graphical user interface packages, we don't need to set up anything. Uh, because the whole x server configuration the whole display configuration will happen when we actually uh, run the container. So it's not going to happen yet. Uh, so what we do first is we build the image, then we install uh, an x server or an application that can uh, that we can connect to and then when running the container, we're actually going to specify that we want to connect to the server. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a command line and we're going to navigate into this directory. In my case, uh, not deep face desktop, 
then after desktop, we go into programming, we go into neural nine, we go into Python, we go into current. And here now I'm going to run the following command, docker built dash T and I'm going to just call this now GUI underscore image. And I'm going to provide a dot to specify the current directory. Um, and of course, I didn't start Docker. So in order to be able to use Docker in the command line, I'm sure you know this, if you're watching this video, you need to also have Docker running. So I'm going to run now the instance of Docker desktop. I hope this works because sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I would have to restart my computer. Um, but Docker needs to be running and then you can use it. And of course, you can also install Docker if you don't have it yet. In my case, now it actually uh, succeeded. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just run the command. Again, Docker build dash T GUI image and dot and now it's building the image. So now it's going to um, execute all of this. Now it's going to go through the whole Docker file and apply everything. I'm going to skip that part because I think it takes around 180 or 200 seconds. So we're going to skip this and I'm going to come back to you once it's done. All right, so we're done with building the image, it took 172 seconds. And what we're going to do next is we're going to install an X server for Windows, I'm going to go with Xming, you can also go with another one like VCX uh, SRV. So VCX server, um, I'm going to go with Xming. In my case, I already have it installed. So I can go into the start menu and type Xming. And I can open the file location. And then I can right click and I can say open file location again, and I can see this executable here. And what I want to do now is I want to right click and I want to open the terminal here. Uh, this is only possible if you have the terminal app. Otherwise, uh, I don't think that you can right click and open just a command prompt. If you don't have Windows terminal installed, you can just open up the CMD command line, you can go up here, you can copy the path, and you can say CD, then the path, and then you also uh, are in that directory but I would recommend installing the Windows terminal just looks better. Um, and here what we're going to do now is we're going to say run, or actually not run, sorry, we're going to just uh, call the executable file, but we're going to specify a flag, which is dash AC to disable access control, because this is necessary to actually be able to get uh, the display from the Docker container and to um, actually allow it uh, on the Xming server. So this is a very, um, cheap solution. Of course, if you're running this in production, if you actually want to uh, do this properly, you probably just have to add an exception or you have to allow the Docker connection. I'm just going to make it very simple here by specifying this uh, flag here. So I'm going to run this and you can see now we have this Windows server running, nothing is visible here, we just have some uh, somewhat blank screen. And what we want to do now is we want to navigate or actually we just use this terminal here. Uh, we're going to now set a display variable in our system that is going to provide the IP address for this X server, which is going to just be our local IP address. And then we're going to run the Docker container with that display being specified. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say set display, or actually before that, we need to run IP config, then we need to get our IPv4 address. In my case, the actual one that I'm looking for is the Ethernet adapter. So IPv4 address, this is the one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say now set display. And I'm going to say equals this local IP address, uh, and then colon 0.0. .0. That is now the display variable. So this is the command I enter here. Uh, and now what I want to do is I, I want to run this Docker container and specify that display as a display to 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 use. So I'm going to say here docker run dash it dash dash rm dash e and we're going to say display equals percent display percent to actually get the uh, the value that we just set here. Um, and then we're going to say dash dash network equals host dash dash name and I'm going to call this now GUI container the image that we want to use is the GUI image. Uh, and that's actually it. So we run this now. And what we should see is there you go in the Windows server here in the X server, we can see this click me button. Now, of course, this is not going to be the full um, UI or it's not going to be in the exact same style as you're going to have it on Windows just because you installed or we installed a very minimalistic graphical user interface, but the elements will always be there. So if I have multiple buttons and labels and text boxes, they're going to be visible here. And when I click now on click me, 
you can see that it opens a message box and info box, hello world. So again, the style is different, of course, because this is running now in a Docker container that has almost nothing that Windows has. Uh, but we still are able to display the UI elements. We have enough packages installed to do that. And we also have the functionality. And of course, if you have now some functionality that is depending on the request module and maybe on beautiful soup four or some other packages, this is also going to be running in the background triggered by a button click, for example, if you want to, uh, if you have everything installed in the Docker container. Uh, so that's the basic process. Again, to recap, we built the image, we have the Docker file, this file here, we install all these packages. Uh, we then install a Windows server or an X server on Windows, we uh, specify, uh, or we run it with this flag that disables the access control. This is again, a simple way to do it, there's a more professional way for sure. Uh, and what we do then is we get the local IP address, we set the display variable locally to be that IP address colon 0.0. .0 and then we run the Docker container, specifying this display as the output display, uh, specifying network host, giving it the name using the image, and then it's running and we can see the result here in the Windows server in the X server that it's connecting to. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.